Welcome back to Point of Contention. Five topics, five minutes, five points of contention. I'm Zach Harper. We got Andrew Schleck producing. Coming up on the show, Warriors survive. Sixers closing it out? Question mark. Can the Nuggets win in Phoenix? Do the Knicks have life? And snub day. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel by searching The Athletic NBA Show or just click below where you see our name on that old YouTube screen. Also subscribe to The Bounce free NBA newsletter from The Athletic. From yours truly, sign up at theathletic.com slash the bounce today is may 11th national what you want day or eat what you want day jay do you eat what you want every day yeah and it's a problem it's a real problem i eat, i eat especially during the playoffs man what's the I'm worst thing what's the worst thing you're doing you're in Philly, ordered, so you just like housing cheesesteaks right now. I, I ordered Taco Bell at 2 a.m. the other night. Why? That's such ordered, a bad idea. Just ordered. go to bed. And, and and I had to, well, I was still working. And so I, I had to. No, man. You got to. I had to convince myself. You live. No. no so I, had, you... I had seven items on my order, and I had to convince myself <laughs> to wipe off the seventh, and then I just stayed with six. Wait, but that. <laughs> That's, no, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. That's, I was with you until seven items. I was, crazy. I was, and then he's I like, "Well, I settled for six. <laughs> well, I gotta know what were the items. I did four of those. Like, I f- I forget what what the name is, but the the little wraps with like the the tortillas and like the, the cheese, cheese roll up. No, but like a quesadilla. The one of the quesadilla joints. Okay, and then then the. The crunch wrap supreme joint. See, here's the thing: the crunch wrap's the only thing you need. That will like get you two a.m. That that'll get you that's good. Like mad tortilla at two a.m. Yeah, that's a lot of tortilla. I'm telling you guys, it's a problem. You asked if I ate what, what did I wanted. You, what, I said, actually, yes, what, did, it's a what did you knock off? What did you decide I can live without? Uh that's a good question. I I think I had a Dorito Loco taco. <laughs> okay. Uh, well. Will you eat what you want? <laughs> yeah, I've been spending a lot of time in Miami, man, and you know those roll calories don't count. That's a, at least that's what all us writers believe. So I agree. Yeah, I was uh, so I was a lot of tacos, some empanadas in my life in, in Miami. I was getting a lot of a lot of Mexican food, food little Cuban food here mm-hmm. and there. You yeah, know, you just got to get amazing, the Miami man. vibes going when you when you down there. So yeah, that, that's the thing. You got to get rid of the seventh item. That's all. That's all. Yeah. And then you're good. That That's yeah, what I miss. Go. I think that's what I miss about Miami the most is Cuban food. Cuban food is good. And oh, it's hard to it's hard to replicate elsewhere. Yeah, you got to go to the real Cuban spot where the the, the wait, waiters and waitresses barely speak English. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they they got kids crying in the in the restaurant. Always a kid crying at the table next to you. That, <laughs> and it's just unattended. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. There's nobody else at the table but the kid no. just crying by itself. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, let's get that, to our, you know you had a good spot. Let's get to our two contestants. We've got Jay King, who obviously is the biggest Cooper flag fan that we know. Jay, have you ever been snubbed? Yeah. I mean, you yeah, stopped that snubbed. seventh item. I, I got snubbed one time. I was man, I was a, a really good little league baseball player. Oh boy. And they knew I played AAU basketball, mm-hmm. so they they didn't let me play on the All Star team when I was 11 years old, and I should have been on that All Star team. I was, I was much better than some of these dudes on the All Star team. Name names. They would, Name names. Who were you better than? I'm not naming names. Wow, what a coward! Because because some of them are still my friends to this day. That's but, what. Then you should name. That's the names. why you should. Yeah. Name. Man, are you kidding me? Man, it was. It was so like I was head and shoulders above these bums. I was probably the second best, eh, third, third, third best player, eleven or twelve in my town at that time, mm-hmm. and and they left me off a fifteen man team or whatever it was. It was it was one of the worst snubs of all time. It's like one of the worst snubs of all time. Dwight Howard like, didn't make the all seventy five list, right? But this is one of the worst. <laughs> One of the worst snubs. But this of all was time. far worse than Dwight Howard. Dwight, Dwight Howard. Ha- Dwight Howard is <laughs> absolutely one of the seventy-five greatest players of all time. A- agree, but I was one of the You're... three best players in Long Meadow. Allegedly, you too much no. of a coward to even name names. Are you kidding me? Uh, Long Meadow team was legendary. Will, have you ever 
have you ever been snubbed? Yeah, man, I still feel a way. I don't know if y'all remember a couple of years ago, Chris Haynes did like this media basketball tournament during oh, Summer man. League. Yeah. And I was not invited. I didn't get an wow. email, a text, group chat, nothing. I'm out here grinding on the basketball court trying to put it put in work for the for the people who say the media members can't hoop mm-hmm. and i'm out here just looking at highlights on on uh on twitter like everybody highlights else is generous. Just, highlights yeah, is generous highlights is generous i was generous. so mad i wasn't in town for that because i was I would oh, lit man. these i felt up. the way i felt the way ethan strauss had like the best highlight of the whole thing that's how you know it like ethan, ethan, strauss ethan can was kind good. Of, he can kind he, of hoop but good. like but it looks oh, weird. Man. I ain't buying it, man. Don't don't try to sell me Ethan Strauss is a hooper. Ethan was. I remember. He's not a. He's not a hooper, but he can hoop. Like Ethan's I think there's a, a different. He, no, he no he's not a. He's paint. not a hooper. He was athletic. Ethan was good. Uh, he wasn't you. athletic. He jumped. Yes, he was. He was okay. fast. I swear and to God, I was shot. Me, I'm putting him on that block and telling everybody to get out of my way. Mm-hmm. Feed, Torture rack time. Yep, absolutely. Feed me the rock. That's like when Jimmy Butler sees Jalen Brunson on him. Give yep. me the rock. Get out, get out the way. Yep. Eat what you want, Day. All right. That's enough banter. Schleck, start the clock. Take one. The dubs survive. On Wednesday night, the Warriors beat the Lakers 121-106 in a must-win elimination game for the Warriors. Got contributions across the board, including 20-10-4 and four from Draymond Green, 25-7-5 and five from Andrew Wiggins. Clay Thompson's still not shooting well. The Lakers still lead the series 3-2, heading back to L.A. for game six, but Anthony Davis' status is in question. Left the game in the fourth quarter after getting hit in the head. It was reported that he's being taken to the locker room in a wheelchair. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, too, that Corgi is 5-0 and in picking this series so far. 5-0 <laughs> and and has the Warriors winning the next two, so do with that what you want. Will, who do you favor going into game six? And if AD can't go, do the Lakers have a chance? If AD can't go, they have no chance. I mean, their entire defense is built around AD and his rim protection. And and not only is it because of his importance, it's because they have literally nobody behind him to play the center position. I mean, if he's not out there, they got Mo Bamba. They're playing (laughs) Wayne and Gabriel. Yeah, he's he's not even healthy. He's at a bum angle. Yeah, Yeah, they're they're probably going to play some Rui Hachimura at center. I mean, yeah, oh, Andrew Wiggins center. and Steph are gonna be look. It's gonna be eat what you want day. If those are the guys <laughs> playing centers for Steph protecting the paint, uh, so they need AD uh, not only for his scoring but his defense. Uh, so I, I will go ahead and guarantee a win for the Warriors if, if the AD doesn't play. Uh, but it seemed like he he was able to walk out the arena fine. I know the inside the NBA guys were making fun of him. I know everybody loves when a wheelchair comes out during the playoffs. Uh, yeah. Jay probably <laughs> that was he probably pooped himself. That. Maybe he pooped. Himself, I don't know. Yeah, he, maybe that was situation. why he had to wear yeah. love. He was he was rubbing his head. He's like, God, I gotta poop so bad. Yeah, and uh, and that, that's what it was. But no, nah, I I think if AD plays, I I I'm probably leaning Lakers just because they're really good at home. You know, uh, LeBron's got a little something saved up for that game six closeout game in his home. So yeah, I lean Lakers. But man, it. Uh, these like last Corky, three games, oh. Clay Thompson, eleven of thirty-seven from the field. It feels like he's got to wake up eventually, right? Does he have a little bit we of a game keep, six we play keep in him? Saying that we keep saying, well, Clay's got to start hitting eventually. Yeah, and it just doesn't man. happen. I'm just waiting for that game six play to come out, and, and maybe that's the the. But I, I will say this last game, seeing Andrew Wiggins finally wake up get some shots going in the paint. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important just because it's been too much on stuff. They can't expect stuff just to carry them the way they have. So if Wiggins gets going and play gets going, they got a chance, but I'll probably still be in the Lakers. Jay, are you going against the Corgi? I, I'm i going. So it's going to be really tough to dispatch the Warriors. They, they should have won game four, really. Lonnie Walker got hot. Their offense mm-hmm. totally fell apart late in that game. They've proven that they're capable of of being right there on the road in this series. They need Jordan Poole. They need something from Jordan Poole. They are going to need, at some point, Jordan Poole to just carry the offense when Steph's not on the court or make that 7-0 run into a 13-0 run because he hits two long shots. Mm -hmm. They need just something. He's playing so hesitant. It's, It's crazy. It's like he'll jack up the worst shot. And then he'll get into the paint and be like pretty open and it's the end of the shot clock and he'll just kick out 
And it's like, what what are you doing? That's the one you turn up, man. That's the one you you won't. He's an shoot. irrational confidence guy with no confidence. It's the, the craziest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought I'd see him lose the bravado, but he's lost it. And sometimes it can get him and the team in trouble, but they need it back. They they need it back. They just need something from him because the rest of the team is it's really limited. And there's there's nobody else. I mean, obviously, Wiggins can get you buckets, and Draymond is going to get you a bit of everything. And But Clay's struggling right now. Steph has to do so much. And the deeper this gets into the series, the weight on Steph's shoulders, he just needs someone to take some of it off. They need just more from Jordan Poole. The problem with Jordan Poole is that he doesn't do anything else, right? Like if he's not hitting and it and it genuinely makes me wonder if it should just be a four minute policy each half from Steve Kerr to Jordan Poole of like, you got four minutes to prove you should play more. And it's gonna here we're in the you know, three minutes left in the first quarter. You go in the game, let's see what you got. You can play a little bit into the second quarter, but if you don't have it, then you gotta go and then do it again in the third quarter. I almost think they need to go the other way. And just and this this is crazy because I all year long, I've thought Jordan Poole has just played a bad brand of basketball. And I think they need to just do something to get him confident again. They need to say, Jordan, just just go out there, do yourself, just rock out. Because it's not just about this series. Like, they're not going to survive every series if Jordan Poole is giving them nothing like this. And they also, I don't think they can take him out of the rotation either. Because if they do, then the guys who replace him just – are so limited. Activate they, Ty Jerome. Got to do yeah, it. See, I, no <laughs> thanks. That's, that's a no thanks for me. All right. <laughs> take, take two. Are the Sixers really going to do it, Jay? Tonight, game six of the East semifinals, Sixers Celtics, and the Sixers are up 3-2. The game is in Philly, and I cannot begin to imagine the insanity that will happen with this Sixers It is going to be tonight. nuts. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Embiid named to his first All-NBA first team yesterday. Sixers destroyed the Celtics in Game 5, winning the first Game 5 ever on the road in the history of the Sixers. Things seem to be lining up for Embiid and company. Jay, do you believe the Sixers can close this series out tonight, and will they? They absolutely can. They have controlled this series, especially from a pace standpoint. I think that's one of the most important things that has happened in this series. The Celtics have been unable to turn Philadelphia over. James Harden is getting them in their sets. They're they're able to just slow down the, the ball and dump it into Joel. And, and honestly, like the slower the game is, the less chance the Celtics have to spread him out in transition, the less chance they have to take advantage of James Harden, who can be iffy in transition, the less chance they have to put, you know, put the the mileage on Embiid that's going to catch up to him late in the fourth quarter. And so I just think somehow the Celtics need to do more to impact the ball, create turnovers, create pace, get out in transition, get them some easy shots so they can feel confident again. I, I thought they got really tight. In game five, that was just a weird performance from them in a huge, huge game. So, yeah, the, the Sixers can win. I At this point, I expect them to win. I, I didn't I didn't come into Whoa. this series thinking they were the better team, but th that is a tough place to play. That is a tough place to win. And with a chance to beat the Celtics, who have really been like the, the bully of the Sixers during the Embiid era, yeah, that place is going to be insane. Uh, so, yeah, I expect the 76ers to win. Will, what, like, <laughs> I still expect the Sixers to blow this just because it's, that's the Sixers. <laughs> it's Doc Rivers. It's James Harden. It's Joel Embiid. Like, they just have this bad luck in the playoffs. But everything Jay said is right. Like, this, this Sixers team is really good. If you, slapped a different name on the jersey i might like start buying in a little bit more but it just feels i don't believe in curses but it feels like something's up with the sixers team 
Uh, but I think there's one factor you're sleeping on is when PJ Tucker's on your team, he will literally put the fear of God in you. That's when true. He, he, he might kick those your ass crazy you eyes on you. He's like, listen, if I don't perform, PJ Tucker might literally murder me on the court in front yeah. of 20,000 people right now. So I need to start hitting some shots. I think that's that might be the biggest difference for this Philly team. But uh, nah, it's what's crazy is these last couple teams, these last couple games, it just feels like. James Harden just looks comfortable in playoff basketball, which is something we rarely see is James Harden just moving around, not feeling like he's under pressure, not feeling like he's two of 11 from the field and he's scared to take shots. Uh, it's been wild just to see how comfortably he's running the offense. And I think the big thing in that game five was just Joel Embiid having his game. I feel like that was his signature game, the way Tatum had his game six in Milwaukee last year. I mm-hmm. felt like that was Embiid's game. And when your team sees your best player have that moment on the road I think it's kind of a a transformative moment for everybody so I I got a new level of confidence in this Philly team and you know it's crazy I I kind of feel like they're the favorite in the east right now I feel like the way you know those guys are playing Maxi stepping up in a big way on the road I feel like that they're probably gonna win game six and I think they're probably gonna march to the finals as well and I think it says a lot about you know what Joel has done this year but also you know, shout out to tampering, man. To getting PJ Tucker. Oh, you got a Daniel tamper. House. You got Daniel a tamper House, if you I couldn't win. believe Daniel House. I, I couldn't believe he played. This is the key. Played well. Look at Kyle Lowry in Miami. If we learn mm-hmm. anything during these play, Anthony Davis in LA. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you learn anything during these playoffs, tamper, folks, kids. If you want to win, tamper. That's what we always, learn from these playoffs. Always tamper. You have to tamper. If you don't tamper, you're a sucker. It's true. You ain't cheating. You ain't trying. Exactly. It's just that's the way of the world. Um, you did mention the Sixers as the favorites. I would warn against. I know he culture. culture, man. It's he just culture. Like, they still I might be banned out, from from Kaseya Center. Is that what it is now? Is that what it's know. called now? <laughs> that can't be the name. I feel like I feel like I go through this evolution every year. Every year I go through this evolution where I'm like, you know what, the Heat, they're. They're not really that good. They're not. They, <laughs> they don't. They don't have good. They got Kevin Love in the starting lineup. We they have the same Tyler conversation every year. Caleb every Martin's single, out here dunking on people. Oh, every Caleb single Martin's year, I'm beast. like, like, are Caleb Martin and Gabe Vincent really going to lead you to the promised land? It's like, no. Yeah. Eric Spolstra is, and Jimmy <laughs> Butler is, and it doesn't matter who's around them. It's 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 incredible. Every single year. I look at their roster and I'm like, there's no way. There's just right. no way. You look and every year. Yeah. Every year they break you down every- into a begrudging <laughs> acceptance that heat life but, and heat, but, uh, heat will, lifers are, are the way to go. I will say every year, as soon as I finally commit, they lose. Like they lose. it yeah, takes right. me <laughs> that long to commit and then they lose. So I think they're going to beat the Knicks, but who knows? I, I'm not going to say the they're Knicks. going to lose after that because – I bow down. I bow down to Heat Coulter. I bow down to Eric Spolstra. I bow down to Jimmy Butler. Clip that, Schleck. That's what I, I need. I, I need that bow, as a personal clip to throw the group chat. To Caleb Martin and Gabe Vincent. Caleb Martin is bullying Julius Randle. He's he's got like he's down forty pounds on him. It's crazy. The heat, All right. They make Let's, no sense. They make no sense. We got plenty. And of time I'm to saying this after heat. a loss. They make oh. no sense. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. Visit linkedin.com slash NBA show 23 for more information. Are you struggling to close deals? You know, cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and the seller at every stage, especially when the sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high quality buyer data into real time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this deep sales, and we've built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash NBA show 23. That is linkedin.com slash NBA show 23 for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash show 23 and get started.
And we're back. Take three Suns scorching in Phoenix. The Nuggets are up three, two on the Suns heading back to Phoenix where the Suns have only lost once during the postseason run so far in home games. Devin Booker is averaging. Check this out. 38.8 points, 4.4 rebounds, 8.6 assists, 69% from the field, 55% from three, 85% for the free throw line. For some reason, I'm disappointed in the free throws, but 85 is still good. He and Durant are combining for 70 points per game at home in the playoffs. On the other side, Nikola Jokic averaging the most road points in the playoffs so far this year with 36 and a half points per game on 62% shooting. Also ridiculous. The Suns will be without Chris Paul tonight as he continues to recover from his groin injury. So, Will, can the Nuggets get this one and finally stop the Suns at home? I think they got a really good shot, obviously. I mean, Jokic is playing at an incredible level. I think I still am feeling game seven-ish in this series. Because mm. I think Devin Booker and KD at home, I think they're going to find a way. Uh, maybe they'll find another Landry Shamit game from one of those role guys. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know why, but when I watch this series, I just feel game seven. It's, this thing is going seven. Uh, maybe that's me just having wishful thinking because I would love to see these two just lock horns for a game seven, KD yeah. and Booker versus Jokic. Uh, but I, I think the, the Suns have figured some stuff out at home, being able to play with some pace, uh, being able to open up some three-pointers. And it feels like, especially in those games in Phoenix, it just turns into – Jokic having to carry the offense all by himself. Now, if Jamal Murray gets going, I think that'll be huge uh, for Denver to kind of put this one away. But I'm feeling I'm feeling game seven ish uh, right now. And I would I would love to see that. Maybe uh, Matt Ishby will put his fingers on uh, fingerprints on this series again. Somebody to. dies for a loose ball or something. Uh, but no, nah, I'm, I'm picking the Suns tonight. And I, I feel like. KD is gonna have one of his better games because it feels like he's he's not shooting seventy five percent like Devin Booker, so he's got to step it up. Yeah, Jay, Kevin Durant's been really good at home in the series. He's been terrible on the road, but I, so that does lend it towards maybe we get a a game seven. The Nuggets better hope they don't get a game seven. Whoa, <laughs> what? No, oh I, they, I'm not. I'm not dominant at home. I'm not saying they would lose a game seven. But if you go into a game seven against Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. you know that w you are one exquisite shooting performance away from going home. Even though you've been the better team in this series, even though I think they're a better team than Phoenix overall, they have a much better supporting cast. Jokic is just at an absurd level right now. The continuity they have matters in this series. But if you go back to game seven... <laughs> And you're against Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Yeah. All it takes is one ridiculous performance. And both of them are so capable of doing that, that I would be petrified. So Denver's got to treat this game six like, like they need to take care of business. They cannot afford to goof up on the road. They, they've got to go in there and take this series. Because they, they are, to me, the better team. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think and so too. I, I think, I think so. it's been pretty clear in this series that they are a better team, but but I'm just saying I would be so scared. Of what, do we think there's Durant. any possibility Chris Paul could be back for a game seven? Does, does it even matter? I, this is going to be. I don't mean this to be as disrespectful as it's going to sound. It's going to sound so disrespectful. Would that actually <laughs> help them? No, I think that's a good I mean, question it'll get, because it a good campaign off the court that that would it, help. It would, but I actually anybody, like I like the pace of play they have with campaign. I wish it was anybody but campaign, but I I don't think you should go <laughs> slow against Denver. Like Chris Paul is only going to play slow. They shouldn't go slow against Denver. Like I think you have to try to run them. And also, if he does come back, like how much can he give you? Yeah, because it's not like he's coming yeah. back at a hundred percent. He's coming back at like all right, shit, I got to play this game. It's a game seven. Yeah. And that would really worry me, especially because like earlier in this season, when he came back from an injury, he looked so bad that I thought he just had nothing left for a while. And then then he he snapped out of that and got better. But like I'm still scarred by watching him the first few games he came back earlier this year. Yeah. And we I, know with Jokic that he's probably gonna target the hell out of Chris Paul if he's oh out my there. Oh my god. He's yes. just gonna be like, Chris Paul, you come here, we're gonna make we're doing split cuts. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do split cut. You're gonna have to change direction constantly. Like we're we're gonna put you through it. 
Um, what do you guys think is more likely that the Nuggets role players show up in game six or the Suns role players show up in game seven? Ooh. Nuggets. <laughs> nuggets. Definitely nuggets. <laughs> Absolutely nuggets. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, when you're talking role players, games. I'm thinking like the non-Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon type of guys. That's what I'm thinking of. Like, do we think like a yeah. Christian Brown or like a KCP has a big game in Denver? I, we, I'm starting the crusade. I I'm calling him Christian Braun. I know he. I know they say it's Brown, <laughs> but you can't spell it that way and tell me that that's Brown. You just can't. Like, I'm not doing I'm with it. You. I'm not I'm doing with it. You. It's Christian Braun. Like, your name is Braun. I'm, I'm with you. That... Put some respect on his name. Literally, it, the spelling's disrespectful. You know what's disrespectful? Hmm. Play, starting Give it Josh Kogi. Of... Starting Josh oh, Kogi. Josh can defend. Yeah, why, Josh why can is defend. Why is Josh and Kogi Star- getting starting? Extremes. Josh and Kogi and campaign in the playoff. They, they give him like they a, the Keith Bogan start where he starts and he plays. Come like on, don't minutes. do, don't do. That. Like, it's like, what's the point of even doing that? Like, <laughs> that's that's not right. Coming up after the break, the Knicks finally show up. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at First Leaf. Head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash NBA show and save fifty percent on your first six bottles. I love this time of year when the weather's getting warmer and I get to see my friends and family more often. Whether we're going to meet up for a birthday party or a barbecue or we're just hanging out, I always want to have some great wine that I can share. And that's why I love First Leaf. As America's most personalized wine company, First Leaf just has completely taken the guesswork out of my wine selection. I just go online, answer a few quick questions about what I like, what I don't like that week, and their experts curate a selection of award-winning wines tailored to my taste. You get to choose how often you receive your wine, and every single selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guarantee. First Leaf's monthly wine club has made my wine shopping experience much easier than it used to be. I no longer have to wander around a giant wine store guessing at what I'm going to like based on the bottle. Now, I love sharing great wine with my family and friends, and I know you will too. So give First Leaf a try and head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash NBA show to sign up and save 50% on your first six bottles, plus free shipping. That's tryfirstleaf.com, T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F.com slash NBA show to save 50% on your first six bottles, plus free shipping. Tryfirstleaf.com slash NBA show. Take four. The Knicks are back. Last night, the Knicks finally showed up for their second round series with the Heat, defeating them. 112-103 at MSG. Jalen Brunson, 38 points, played every single second of the 48 minutes. Tibbs trusted Brunson and Quentin Grimes in this elimination game, giving them both 48 minutes each because we know he just doesn't like to make substitutions. I think he's the guy that plays like NBA 2K and forgets that like players get tired and that he has to go to the menu or do the little pull-down menu to sub guys out. Do you know the, the story of the time Doc Rivers got ejected? And Tom Thibodeau coached the final 18 minutes of a game and did not make a single substitution. I buy that, man. I, I buy it. that. I indeed. Love it. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm pretty sure, like 100% sure, not 100%, close to 100% sure, he just forgot he had it to sub. Yeah. The Heat, who have cooled off in the second round from three, only shot 30% from deep or out rebounded 30, 34 to 50 in this game. The series heads back to Miami 3 2, and the Heat have another chance to close this out. So, Jay. It's your begrudging acceptance. Will Jimmy Butler end this on Friday or did the Knicks give you hope? Jimmy's going to end it. Jimmy's going to end it. These, these dudes needed 48 minutes from Jalen Brunson in game five, Mm -hmm. game five, (laughs) 48 of them. And like in every minute counted because they didn't really pull away until that last minute. Like Miami still had a chance. I was so much. So much of this series comes to down to me. Can Julius Randle just be solid? Because he has a size advantage. He has a physicality advantage. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he just uses it in all the wrong ways. And sometimes he's he plays too slow and he shoots when he should pass. Mm-hmm. The two plays that were the most important to me are like, the the plays that he needs to continue doing the most the drives to the paint 
there were two in the second half of of game five. Drives to the paint, sprays it to the corner. Both of them ended up with Jalen Brunson, swing pass to Jalen Brunson for three. And that's what Julius Randle can do. I just don't trust him to do it. Right. I don't think I don't think this Knicks team has the collective IQ to beat an Eric Spolster defense. It's gonna be Miami. I I finally bowed down to Eric Spolster. Yeah, select Jimmy remember, give me that, I need that I need that personal clip right there. Uh Will. <laughs> do you think the Knicks have a chance? Because I've I've been saying this whole series, if they just well, I didn't say play Jalen Brunson, you know, 48 minutes, but I just thought if and they make J- if they make Jalen Brunson the absolute focus and everything goes through him, they have a shot to make it competitive and and win a you know, win a game or two. But they haven't done that until game five. Listen, man, heat culture. That's all I'm gonna say. Heat culture. Mm-hmm. There's no denying it. Mm-hmm. The, the weather's gonna be hot in Miami. Mm-hmm. You know oh, that the Knicks are gonna like that. Uh, you can't <laughs> hit a jumper when it's hot outside. Uh, but no, nah, I mean, we saw the Jalen Brunson masterpiece: forty-eight minutes, thirty-eight points. I think that you could say that was his best playoff game, best game period of his career. Probably, I know he had forty on that Utah team last year, but they were sorry uh, by the end. So I think we're gonna call this the best game of Jalen Brunson's career. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I really part of me wants to see the Knicks win because I just want to see how far Tibbs can keep this going at playing Jalen Brunson forty eight minutes every single game. Like I want them to go to Game Seven of the Finals with Jalen Brunson playing forty eight minutes every single game. Uh, that would be incredible. Yeah, uh, but I just think, man, that the Heat that undefeated at home in this playoffs. You know, J- Jimmy Butler like took like twelve shots that Game Five, so you know he's kind of saving his energy. For when they get back to Miami, and I feel like once he kind of puts his foot on the gas pedal, I think it, it, it'll be too much for the Knicks. Uh, the, the Heat has just got too much, too many weapons over there. Bam Adebayo uh, has been dominant when he really, you know, turns his game up against those Miami bigs. And you know, I, I hate to say it, but I feel like the Knicks' chances kind of ride on Julius Randle waking up. And if that's what I'm hoping, if I'm a Knicks fan. Then you know I'm I'm looking at Tankathon trying to see what those those draft picks are gonna be because I don't oh, feel no. like Julius Randle is gonna get them there. So uh, yeah, I feel like Heat culture, uh, get it going. I'm gonna go ahead and send my 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 travel to to, to my guy Sergio and see if I'm gonna be back. <laughs> Serge get approved, yeah. For games three and four. <laughs> Put him through. Approve my trip, Sergio. Yep. I'm back in the building eating empanadas again. Yep. And get the closeout game in Philly when they win five. Uh, Jay, if it does get to a game <laughs> seven. If it does get to a game seven, do the Knicks have a chance? Which is a disrespectful question because they'll be they'll be at home. But yeah, what one game situation, they would absolutely have a chance. How good of a but chance? It wouldn't be good. <laughs> it it would wouldn't be as good as most teams at home in game seven. Tell you that much. Tell you that much. Oh, I know man. I I am um, I'm done disrespecting the heat. I'm done. You know, just what he's looking trying to do at their here, roster. He's trying to get them to lose uh, by accepting the them. That's, jinx, yeah, that's the reverse I, jinx. He tried I to am, do with Sacramento. Like he's, I yeah, am he, done. <laughs> I am done looking at the heat roster. No, and I, just I've, drugging I've my shoulders and thinking, before. how could they possibly do this again? I'm done. It's you got, over. You got to start I listening have, to me. I have fully accepted that if a series is moderately close. Put them in the finals, you coward. Then Eric Spolstra will win it. <laughs> if it is wildly lopsided, he might still win it. And and you that's just he won't, how, he that's won't just give credit to Jimmy go. Butler. He won't give credit to. Oh Jimmy no, Butler. I've, I've given I've given all sorts of credit to Jimmy Butler. I, uh, I have bowed down to Jimmy Butler. Just Jimmy not Gabe Butler Vincent. has continuously been awesome. Mm-hmm. Put but, Jimmy and Spo against the '96 Bulls. I got Heat in six. I got Heat in four. <laughs> just Jimmy with Spo coaching him. It's over. I'm telling, I'm it's telling you, he out, would man. outcoach Matt the pants Truth. off of Phil Jackson. Oh my God. <laughs> He'd have that he had that triangle looking like a damn rhombus. Are you kidding me? I don't yeah, even know what that means. Take five. Yeah, it's another yeah, joke. A trapezoid. Oh, it's gonna be a trapezoid. No now. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking way too much geometry right now. We, we, Take we five. Gotta, get it together. Snub day. Today is also International Snub Day, the day we talk about who didn't make all NBA teams and who was snubbed. 
All in NBA teams were named last night. Here are the results. First team, Giannis, Tatum, Embiid, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Luka. Team two, Jokic, Donovan Mitchell, Steph Curry, Jimmy Butler, Jalen Brown. Team three, Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox, Damian Lillard, Julius Randle, and LeBron James. So the snub list, we have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Anthony Davis, Jalen Brunson, James Harden, Pascal Siakam, Kawhi Leonard, John Morant, Kyrie Irving. We can talk snubs, but you got to tell me who you take off the all NBA teams if you want to say a snub's name. So, Will, are there any real snubs and who are you taking off the all NBA teams if so? I think the most important thing you said, whenever we have these snub conversations, stop being a coward. Mm -hmm. Name who you're taking off Mm -hmm. off the list, not just who should be on the list. Uh, So I had a vote this year. I did not have Damian Lillard on my All-NBA team. I did have Devin Booker on my third team All-NBA. I think uh, I can understand putting Dame on there. I just had a hard time putting the dude on there when his team had the fifth worst record in the NBA. I understand Portland went in the ultimate tank mode at the end of the season. They were losing games by like 100 points at the end of the year trying to get Wimby. I get it. But they lost a lot of games with Dame in there as well. And I felt like when Book was healthy, Phoenix was an elite team in the mm-hmm. West. He was an elite two guard. You can argue the best two guard in the NBA. Uh, so I think Book, I have him on my team. I understand putting Dame on there. They're like 12 guards who deserve some consideration this year. So I get it. Uh, but that's my guy, uh, Devin Booker on the third all NBA team. I think he deserved it. Jay, you putting anybody on and who are you taking off? A book Booker would have been one for me. Uh, not too many missed he, games for him. It, he had a lot of missed games because that was the only at, thing that did it for me. It's just like there was a certain point where missed games are like, all right, I gotta, I gotta cut someone he, here. But he was at MVP candidate level. He was when absolutely. He did play. He was absolutely. And, yeah. and to to Will's point, like Damian Lillard, even when he did play, he was playing like it was just his team was bad. And every team knew his team was bad. Nobody gets up for a bad team. Mm-hmm. I just felt like comparing those two seasons was not – like it, Booker's was just far more important than Dame's. Yeah. And and maybe that's unfair to Dame because he was just playing with, like, young guys who have no clue how to play basketball. But that's that's just how I felt. And then the other one, I would have taken off LeBron and I would have put in La- Lowry Markkinen. 100%. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Lowry LeBron Markkinen, missed too many games. Like he and they thrived when he when he was out that last stretch. Like they found yeah. themselves, yeah. you know. I gotta admit, I had LeBron's second team. I just it just felt crazy not putting LeBron on there. It does feel playing. crazy. It he does, does feel like especially when it's like Lowry Markkinen. Yes. Like yes, we no, see LeBron I, it, now. It sounds playoffs, dumb on the surface. Like yeah. we forget how crazy LeBron was early in the season when he was healthy. Like mm-hmm. he was going nuts when they were trash, and he was. But they were losing games kinda, all the time. Yeah, I'm, Those... I'm about to say I'm kind of contradicting myself now because I said I didn't put Dame because his, his team was trash and LeBron's team was trash when he was putting up big numbers. Yeah. But I was just kind of looking at it. And I was like, am, am I gonna look back ten years from now and be like, yeah, I feel comfortable putting Lowry Markin in over LeBron James on my All NBA team? I was like, nah, I'm not gonna be that guy. Uh, you also, but I get it. I get you can't it. like, you can't vote this way, but. There's something cool about like 19th straight All NBA selection, <laughs> you know? Like what that's are the like? Crazy. It, it, yeah, that's man, nuts, that's so right? Stunt. That's, yeah, that's, that's stunt. like that's insane. You're one of the top 15 players in the league for 19 straight years. There's not one year you get hurt. There's mm-hmm. not one year you slip up a little bit. There's not mm-hmm. one year your team is too bad for you to get there. Well, if we're being honest, uh, you know, this year could have been the year there. before. The year before Anthony Davis, you probably shouldn't have made it. He played like 50 he, games. So he, he, he did, though. Made it. He probably, did, though. But, yo, yeah. to, the, to the point Jay made, can I just talk about how much I hate the 65-game rule that's coming in next year? And I would oh, have really? to glue to the game's like play it. tab. 
on I like these guys' it. basketball reference page. I hate it. I hate oh, it so much. Start I showing really up. Let me let me be an old white guy on like, radio, you know, uh, sports guy talk radio. Show up games. to work, NBA players. You get paid millions of dollars to do this job. <laughs> You can't show up so little Timmy, whose dad spent his hard-earned money to get you courtside seats. Three eighty-one at the top. Oh, I love when it's like, <laughs> oh, these kids sitting courtside, they didn't get to see LeBron tonight. It's like, yeah, these kids are rich. Like, what are you doing? lives in an eight-bedroom mansion. Like, that kid right. will be fine. I yeah. promise. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I just, I, I like, I don't, don't, I'm not mad at like, like we were talking about with Booker being like, he just didn't play enough games to make your All NBA team fine. I hate putting a number on it. Where yeah. it's like you have to reach this number or you're cut off. It just feels weird to me because like we don't do that with any other award uh, where you have to reach a certain like you can't be an MVP unless you average at least twenty five points per game. Like we don't we don't do that with any other award. It just feels weird to do that with games played. Yeah, are we gonna do that with is it with most improved as well? Because that's that's what it gets funny to me if we're like, all right, you're most improved, but you better hit that sixty five game mark. Right. Six man, you gotta average at least fifteen in the game. That's the All rookie. Jamal Crawford line. All rookie second team. You better get in sixty games if you want to get here. <laughs> I love the idea of this doing is that. Weird. Yeah. I like I like it, but it is weird. I I'll, I'll admit it's weird. I just I also think they're gonna get rid of it in the next CBA. Plus what we don't talk about enough, and I talked about this with Garrett Temple at end of uh season press conferences where they're going to have this thing where, like, if a team forces you to sit, they're going to have, like, an arbitration to be, like, mm-hmm. these games count and these games don't count for your games played. So we're going to have, like, your actual games played versus your games played that should count. And we're going to have, like, put this stuff into, like, some random arbitrator's hands to figure out which of your games I've count. I've always like, said that NBA needs more arbitration. I've always said God. that. It's, I, I want to know who's the guy determining which game counted. We, we need somebody to do that. I just, Vork, I, we need Vork to do that story. Shout out to my guy, Vork. Who's the arbitrator? I, I just can't wait. The gavel down. I can't wait for Rudy Gobert to like hit 64 games, think he's defensive player of the year, and then pull like an Andrew Garfield in the social network and go, <laughs> tell the Timberwolves, you better lawyer up, motherfucker, because I'm coming for that entire <laughs> award. That's what I want to see. Uh, that I want to see I that. I thought you were going to say Rudy Gobert crying. Getting any more DPY. 64 games. All right. That's going to do it for this week's point of contention. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to all the podcasts on the Athletic Podcast Network. Warriors plus minus anything is potable. Down to dunk. No dunks. Glue guys. Sixers beat. And, of course, the Bun and Cardigan show for Jay King, for Will Guillory, for Andrew Schlecht. I'm Zach Harper. See you next time on Point of Contention.